When a doctor has a difference in personal beliefs from their patients, they may not be able to provide the care that their patients request, and they may find themselves in a position of conscientious objection to the treatment requested. A conscientious objection is a refusal to participate in a medical intervention because of a deeply held personal belief against it. This applies to treatment that is legal, falls within the practitioner's area of expertise, and would be seen as medically appropriate to a practitioner who did not hold such a personal objection to it. The beliefs on which a conscientious objection rests should be held sincerely by the practitioner. They may be religious, moral, philosophical, or otherwise personal. This does not apply in situations where a doctor refuses to provide an intervention because they are not qualified, or where it is illegal or medically inappropriate. One argument in favour of conscientious objection involves the idea of preventing harm to doctors who hold such beliefs. In medicine, conscientious objection tends to arise around interventions that are requested in reproductive health and in end-of-life care, periods that may hold great moral significance to some and which involve beliefs that some doctors may hold to be a fundamental part of their identity. As doctors are autonomous individuals themselves, it may be argued that it would place unacceptable restrictions on their liberty and violate their autonomy if they were compelled to act in a way that violates these deeply held beliefs. And therefore, their refusal to participate should be respected without social or disciplinary consequences. Further, an argument is that a doctor who has a strong conviction that an intervention is wrong may not be the best person to provide that intervention for his patient. In terms of ethical principles, the debate around conscientious objection involves a conflict between a doctor's and a patient's autonomy, that is the patient's choice to receive legal and legitimate treatment. The principle of non-maleficence should also be considered carefully in this dilemma, in that when conscientious objection is exercised, a doctor should seek to minimise any harm that results to the patient. The impact on patients may, looked at, may be looked at in terms of their physical, emotional, health and in terms of financial consequences. If a doctor has a conscientious objection to a treatment they request, a patient may need to seek care from a second doctor who does not hold such an objection and that may cause delays in care. This may involve consequences to their physical health especially when the intervention requested is time sensitive. If access to care is delayed, patients may no longer be eligible to receive the intervention they request or may require a different intervention with higher risks. Some patients may misunderstand their doctor's objection to mean that the intervention is not available anywhere. And others, rather than seeking care from a second doctor, may look for illegal or unsafe but more easily accessible versions of these interventions. Depending on how conscientious objection is exercised, it may result in anxiety or distress to the patient, particularly if they are seeking care that is stigmatised. They may be a perception that their requests are being judged by the doctor as immoral. Patients also have to incur the financial cost of multiple visits, and this may result in disproportionate harm to certain groups, such as patients with financial constraints or who are otherwise vulnerable. Taking conscientious objection to abortion as an example. We can consider the potential physical consequences to the patient. Abortion is safer the earlier it is done in pregnancy, and some methods by which abortion can be performed are no longer available in the second trimester, so delays in care may result in the need for more risky methods being used. Abortion is available legally in Singapore only up to 24 weeks of pregnancy. So if care is delayed beyond this point, there is no longer an option to terminate the pregnancy. Such delays may be gravely distressing to patients. And these harms may affect certain vulnerable groups more than others. For example, a woman who lives in an abusive relationship may face difficulties leaving her home for a second time to consult a doctor who does not have an objection to abortion. These potential harms must be managed with great care as warned in the WHO fact sheet on unsafe abortion, any woman with an unwanted pregnancy who cannot access safe abortion is at risk of an unsafe abortion and the increased morbidity and mortality associated with this. 
Some argue that conscientious objection has a potential impact on healthcare workers who do not hold such objections. They may have to provide a greater number of these interventions than if all doctors were to participate. And if these interventions are stigmatized in the practice or in the community, they may face social consequences, such as being ostracized or being perceived as morally questionable. It may also be considered that some doctors who choose to provide interventions such as abortion or certain types of end-of-life care may be doing so out of reasons of conscience too, that is, deeply held beliefs that these interventions are morally correct, indeed morally necessary. We may then consider how best to protect doctors who have conscientious objections while minimizing the harms that result. From the World Medical Association Code of Ethics come the following guidelines. The physician has an ethical obligation to minimize disruption to patient care. Physician conscientious objection to provision of any lawful medical interventions may only be exercised if the individual patient is not harmed or discriminated against and if the patient's health is not endangered. Some actions that can, in, that can minimize harm include informing the patient early in a manner that causes minimal distress without implying moral judgment. It may help to ensure that there is a doctor available to provide this care and delivery of the care may then be seen as a responsibility that is fulfilled by the profession as a whole, rather than necessarily delivered by one individual doctor. It may also be useful for the doctor to refer the patient to a colleague <coughs> who can provide the intervention requested, although this may also cause harm to the doctor if they consider that making this referral makes them morally complicit. Doctors should not exercise conscientious objection in situations in which it will cause serious harm to the patient. The scope of conscientious objection should also be considered when looking at how to minimise harm. In the case of Dugan and Wood in Scotland, this involved two midwives who had registered a conscientious objection to abortion. They then asked whether they were required to delegate and supervise and support staff in the treatment of patients undergoing abortion that is, without them being directly involved in actions taken to terminate the pregnancy. This case was taken to the Supreme Court and the decision was made that conscientious objection to participation in abortion, the words used in the law, was only applicable to the provision of hands-on care. Therefore, there are limits to the scope of conscientious objection. In Singapore, the right to conscientious objection is legally protected under, under the Termination of Pregnancy Act, which governs the practice of abortion in Singapore, and under the Advanced Medical Directive, or AMD Act, which governs matters around advanced directives against artificial prolongation of the dying process. The Singapore Medical Council, ECEG, also makes room for conscientious objection and says that doctors must explain their objections to patients in an inoffensive and non-judgmental manner and inform them that they are free to seek medical treatment elsewhere. It also says that doctors may offer more information if patients request it. The accompanying SMC Handbook of Medical Ethics seems to impose a duty not to obstruct patients' access to other service providers, even if those doctors may not wish to actively support patients accessing services that they have a conscientious objection to. It also says that they should avoid giving patients the impression that such treatments are unavailable if this is not true. However, it states that doctors who have a strong opposition to a course of action would not be obliged to refer patients to other doctors to carry out such treatments. This should not apply in an act where transfer of care is explicitly required. In the Termination of Pregnancy Act, conscientious objection cannot be exercised where the treatment is immediately necessary to save the life or to prevent grave permanent injury to the physical or mental health of a pregnant woman. Under the Advanced Medical Directive Act, a doctor who has registered an objection will not witness or act on an AMD or certify terminal illness which would trigger the AMD. But this doctor must still request for a search of the AMD register when it is indicated and must take all reasonable steps as soon as practicable for the care of the patient to be transferred under another medical practitioner 
who has not registered such an objection. This, then, is how conscientious objection may be said to be exercised ethically in Singapore. This is a right that is protected in some situations under the law and is also part of the ethical guidelines for the profession. Doctors are advised on how to communicate their objections without causing judgment or offence and while respecting their patients' wishes, values and choices. They should also avoid misinformation and avoid obstructing access to the intervention requested. Outside of the AMD Act, the SMC guidelines do not impose a duty to refer, although this is noted to be useful to patients, rather than, in the words of the ECEG, leaving them with nowhere to turn. Conscientious objection, importantly, should not be exercised if the intervention is necessary to prevent serious harm or death. This concludes our examination of some of the major rights that are protected for doctors in Singapore, as well as the professional responsibilities that they bear, as well as the right to exercise conscientious objection within limits. Thank you.